Welcome to a video showing IronCAD's camera and animations mixed together. This video will highlight how to create a camera in IronCAD and how to animate it to give you a sequence of like a walkthrough. So in IronCAD we have our scene browser on the left hand side and you can see our camera sections here. Uh, what we have, if you expand that, you can see there's a lot of cameras that are created by default and you also can tell what your current one is with the red highlight. So if you don't really want all these extra cameras, you can actually select any one of these cameras and hit your delete key to get rid of those. And basically we have our current view that we're looking at. This is our viewing direction. But we want to create a new camera that we actually want to create a walkthrough. And in this case we have a kitchen and we want to actually have a camera walk through the front door here and then turn to look at our kitchen and move back a little bit. So to give us a nice field of view of this kitchen environment. So to do that, we're going to use uh, our tools for creating cameras and our animations, which were found under the, the visualization ribbon bar. To start off with, we need to turn on our camera. So under the render, you'll see some things for renderings, if you're doing realistic renderings, your lights, and also cameras. And if you drop down on that, you can see various things inside of here. And one of those is insert a camera. So what we want to do is actually insert a camera, but we want to start off with where we want it to be. So first, let's just go ahead and save our current view. So we, if we want to get back to this later, we can just click on our save, call this as our ISO view, and hit OK, and that'll save our camera for us if we ever need to get back to it. Next, we want to look at the viewing direction that we want for our particular uh, camera that we're going to create. So what I'm going to use is this look at tool down here, and I'm going to look at the side of this face. And I currently have perspective on, <clears throat> as you can see, down here at the bottom. What we want to do is kind of get this centered and zoomed in a little ways where you want to start off with that camera. So we're going to start off somewhere in here. So this is where we want to animate and kind of come into that door. And we'll move this around a little bit later, but this is just kind of giving us a starting point of where to place that camera. So now if we go into our insert camera and just pick inside of here, it'll tell us a few things. How do you want to orient the camera? And you can pick just your current front, top, right, isometric type views, or use, use it where it's currently uh, looking in this direction you can change its orientation later or just copy the current view that we're looking at and what, that's what we want to do is where we're currently at this is where we're sitting and you notice it tells us how far the camera is away from the geometry which is pretty pretty far out here so just keep that note when we do some animations here so next let's say well do you want to use perspective yes we want to keep it in a perspective and you want to look at the camera now and no we don't really want to look through it right now because we're going to actually move that camera and add some animation paths to it so we need to see it we don't really want to move it yet so we'll go ahead and hit finish and what it's going to tell you that the cameras aren't currently being shown. You can turn those on or off. We're not going to turn them on right now, but you can turn them on if you want to work with those cameras and uh, use them in the scene. But notice, once we created that, it actually created us a new camera here called Camera 468, but we can rename that if we want. We'll call this one our Animate Camera and rename that there. So if we know, we can zoom back out a little bit and look around. And if we select on this, we can see our cameras being created pretty far out here uh, in our viewing direction that we created. So it's sitting out here. We can move that around if we want, uh, which you may want to do uh, just to move it closer if you like. But what we want to do now is animate that. So what we need to do is go to our same visualization ribbon bar. And under animation, you can see an option up here for new path. If you don't see that, you can hit drop down and find add new path as well. But what we want to do is add new path to that. In our case, we want it to move in the width direction towards that house. Okay, So what we want to do is change this to the width direction. We don't want it to spin, we actually want it to move, sorry. So we want to change that to a width direction and we can enter a distance. So we notice that camera was 35,000 uh, millimeters out here so it's pretty far away so you can actually add a pretty large value here say like 10,000 to get a uh, good animation path that you can click on is what we're trying to do. So we're going to start off with creating a default path out here and once we click that It'll go away, but once we click back on, we'll see now we have our camera and we see that animation path, which is in gray in our, our environment. So if we click on that animation path, you can see that it's starting to move forward. And you can do a lot of things with this. So right now, notice where it's pointing. So it, it's pointing over here in this location. We want to move, may move this whole entire path over. If we select our, our tribal and move it, notice it'll move that whole pa uh, animation path over. So it'll start us over in a new location. So maybe in our case, we want to be about centered with that door. So let's kind of get a good viewing direction here and we can kind of zoom it in and try to get the middle of that door is where we actually want to start uh, our animation path. Next we can click on some of these animation key points. These are the keyframe points. So you can click on this point and move it independently. The top handle will move it up if you want to do like sort of like a roller coaster movement. Um, 
this is all in our animation section, but this is our key point for our next point. What we want to do is move this point in. So we're just going to select it and move it directly into here. And we can see that we want to go into that door and through it. So what we'll do is just grab this and move it into this uh, location here. So we see that it's coming in to the room at that location. Okay, so we've got it coming through there, through the door. Uh, we are fairly high, but we want to see a top of the counter, so that's fine where it's sitting at. But what we wanted to do is actually wanted to turn and look inside of here. Now, if we turn this animation right now, the whole animation would sequence from being at this location to turning here, which we don't want it to do because then it would actually turn as it's going through the door. So we actually need to add a new keyframe. So if you come up to our animation uh, ribbon again, you can see this option here for extending paths, which I'll show you a little bit later, but you can also insert keys. So what we're gonna do is insert a key, and we're just gonna pick <clears throat> right along this uh, path here. Oops, there we go, insert a key right there. So we can insert a key right on that path, and we can see that it's going right here is where our next, next key is. And we really don't uh, uh, mind that it's um, outside the door. We're gonna, basically what we wanna do is turn from here to here. So if we go to this key point, we actually wanna turn this at this point. So we're gonna take the tri ball and we're gonna turn it uh, to say somewhere in there, 90 degrees. So we, can, we can type this in exactly or we can just edit it later. So we'll just rotate it there <coughs> to start off with. And what I mean by editing it later is if you right click on any of these key paths, you can go to the keyframe properties. And there's a position tab that tells you, well, how much is it gonna rotate? Well, it's gonna rotate a little bit more than 90. Let's just set it to directly 90 inside there. So it's gonna look directly right at that wall. Okay, so that's gonna give us our rotation. And next we wanna extend this path. So let's go back up to our animation and we can extend the path. We actually want it to come somewhere out here. It's kind of at an angle. We can just click a point again, uh, just to get it at a location and hit escape to exit out of that command. So now we can see that it's gonna turn inside of here and it's gonna come out this way. And we can select on this point again, use that tri ball, we can pull it out, say let's come out a little bit further inside of there. So we want it to come out of the angle a little bit. And say we want it to turn and look a little bit more toward this door. So we'll turn on the tri ball and say just turn and look that way a little bit. Again, we can go to the properties of the keyframe, look at the position. Let's just make it an even 110 inside of there. So you can tweak that however you want later just by adjusting those values to see where you really need to look at at that point. So now we have our animation that's going to come into here, this location, turn, and move back out of there. Okay, so that's kind of what our animation path we wanted to do. So we can click off, and that'll turn that off. But we also notice it's going to go right through our door. Well, we may want to have animation of the door to open up as well. So let's go ahead and select on that door. We can see our anchor point is located right here, and we want to spin basically about that height axis. So let's go ahead and add a new path for that. And this time, we want to spin. And we want to spin about that height axis. So it's telling us right here, that's that height axis that we want to spin about inside of there. And we'll just turn it 100, 120 degrees. So you can see that it's going to spin inside, or we can have it spin outside if we want to open out or in. Either way, we can just change that around by hitting reverse direction. But we want it to open inside in this case. So let's go ahead and hit that. And we can see that it's going to spin and open that door up. And let's just run it where we're at now. So we can kind of see, well, how, how does this animation look? So let's go ahead and look through our camera. So we can see our viewing direction here, and we turn on our animation. And now if we hit play, it'll go pretty fast, but we'll see that it's moving through here a little bit and jumping through a little ways. So we can see that it's actually kind of moving a little bit as, as it's coming in here and walking through that door and moving out. So it's a little zoomed in too much, so let's make some changes to this. So let's turn our animation off. Yeah, that's just telling me I'm looking for an image that I'm missing here. So we can see that our animation is still a little off to the right, so we want to, might want to move it over to the left a little bit more. And move the camera over just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and look through this. Let's look through that camera. We can access our camera again, and again, we want to move that over just a little bit more so it's not quite sitting there. So let's we'll move that over just a little bit more inside of there. Some other things we want to do <clears throat> on that camera, if you go to the properties, is that perspective is what's controlling how uh, what angle it is that we're seeing inside that room. So right now it's a really small angle for the perspective. Let's jump that up to something like 45 to make it quite <clears throat> quite large to give us a better viewing direction of what we're seeing. Okay. We can also look at our animations. So if we go on our animation path here, so notice we know we see that this thing is running. We set it up for uh, six minutes, or sorry, six seconds to begin with, and we have the animate going and the door open at the same time. Well, let's move the door out a little bit. So let's have it animate some and then have the door open 
and we can move the anim animation timeline for the door. This is actually the door here. And this is for the camera, so let's extend this out. Let's make this a little bit longer and make it a little bit slower to move out, to have the camera move. So it gives us a little bit of smoother action inside of there. So we're just adjusting the timeline inside of here. And now if we <clears throat> close that, we can look at our camera again, look through it. And notice the field of view has changed quite a bit since we were at a, a, a different uh, field of view. But we can go ahead and hit on, we can hit play. Now we can see it come through a little bit smoother, going right through the door, panning and moving out. Okay, so that's, again, we can slow that down even more by adjusting that timeline, but you can adjust this bar here just to see it. So we went through the door there, like we said, and uh, slide a little bit more. It's turning so we can look at the kitchen, then it moves out a little bit more. So we may want to pull the camera back a little bit more to give us a better field of view if we like, or if that's where we want it to end, that's fine. So that's kind of giving an example of how to build that animation. And we can also build an animation of the door shutting back if we like as well. And if we turn off that animation, we'll go back to where we started. And again, you can keep making tweaks and adjustments to these uh, to get them to really set up where you want. So once you have these created, the next thing you want to do is kind of export these out to be used for an AVI file or build your own MP4 file type things. Uh, to do that, you can do the export animation here, or you can go to Menu, File, and Export, and animation is sitting there as well. So Export Animation is here and there, but either way, when you pick that, you have options to export that as an AVI file, or image files, or even animating GIF. Uh, the reason we give you the image files is if you're doing high, high, re high realistic rendering as well, so IronCAD does have a rendering engine in, in the, uh, the scene as well, so you can render realistic rendering images. You can use that <clears throat> and the animation together, and we recommend using like a, a PNG or a TIFF export, and this will actually create an image for each keyframe of your animation. So that'll or actual sequence of the animation timeline. So that'll create a bunch of images for you, then you can take that into an application like PaintShop Pro, uh, Photoshop, and actually combine that into an animation timeline and export it into an MP4 file. And what it basically is giving you a high quality rendering versus a basic API file that this would export out as. So those are probably the best way to export, and we recommend using those to export your animations. Okay, so that's just a, a simple overview of how to use cameras and create, creating uh, cameras to be animated and your current cameras. And then you can just add the animation timelines just like you do in an IronCAD. They all have the same capabilities that you can add animation paths, key, key, <coughs> key frames inside of there or insert keys. And then you can adjust those however you see fit. So this again, this is just a quick overview of that animation that we have our camera that is going to go through and animate, and turn, and come out. So a very simple animation, but a very effective way to give a good walkthrough of your particular environment. Hopefully you find this useful and uh, have some fun creating your own animations. Thanks.